The Sigma DP3 Merrill usually grabs people's attention when they hear it's got a 46 megapixel APS-C size sensor. Today we'll talk about that sensor, this 50 millimeter lens, and the rest of this interesting camera from Sigma. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. You know, Sigma may be best known as a lens maker, but this 50mm f2.8 lens happens to be permanently attached to Sigma's own camera body and sensor in a package that they call the DP3 Merrill. Now, looking over Sigma's marketing materials for the DP3 Merrill, you'll see that there's a lot of emphasis on their 46 megapixel Foveon X3 CMOS sensor. And I agree that this camera's primary strength is that sensor. So let me say right up front, this sensor and lens combination can capture some beautiful images with great sharp detail and impressive dynamic range. I found images to be color accurate and there's a richness to images that's noticeable. Subtle gradations and tonal shifts are smooth and well handled. Now, I mentioned that the DP3 Merrill has a 46 megapixel APS-C size sensor, but Unless you understand the structure of the Foveon X3 sensor, you might guess that this means you'll be capturing 46 megapixel images. You won't. Your final image size is actually much closer to 15 megapixels. That's because the Foveon X3 processor has about 15 megapixels for capturing red, 15 megapixels for capturing green, and the same for blue. So technically, it's using 46 megapixels to capture 15 megapixel images. Still, those 15 megapixel images could be among the best out there if you know what you're doing. Let's quickly go over the DP3 Merrill's bullet points so that you understand where this camera falls in the marketplace. It's solidly built, and the buttons and command dial are straightforward and feel like a quality product. The camera's body is all metal and it's somewhat heavy for its size, so I wish it was a little grippier. And the 920,000 pixel 3-inch LCD doesn't tilt or swivel, but it is really sharp. The menus are crisp and easy to understand, and the camera is very intuitively designed. The DP3 Merrill has pro shooting modes like program mode, shutter priority, aperture priority as well as manual mode, and three user-definable settings but no consumer auto modes. It has exposure compensation and a hot shoe for adding flash since there's no built-in pop-up flash unit. The DP3 Merrill has a movie mode, but it is limited to 640 by 480 VGA resolution, so you probably won't be shooting movies with it unless your cell phone camera is broken. The 50 millimeter lens is a 35 millimeter equivalent to a 75 millimeter lens, and it can be focused automatically or manually. In manual focus mode, you turn the focus ring and watch both the focus you're getting as well as the LCD bar graph that tells you how far away you're focused. Since the LCD is very crisp, as I mentioned, I was able to do pretty well focusing manually unless I was in direct sunshine where the reflections on the LCD proved to be pretty challenging. While focus can be quite accurate, manual focusing isn't very quick. Autofocusing only uses contrast detection, and it's not especially quick compared to most current digital cameras on the market, especially in medium to low light. The ISO range is from 100 to 6400, but I found it to be pretty noisy at 800 and above. So, who might consider picking up a Sigma DP3 Merrill? I'm thinking a landscape shooter or a still life photographer who isn't in a big hurry. Portrait shooters might also be able to grab some impressive studio portraits using some good strobes, but informal portraiture isn't really this camera's strong suit. There's no question that this lens and sensor combination can capture some beautiful color-accurate images with nuanced tonal control, but since there's no image stabilization and since higher ISO low-light performance isn't terribly good, you'll probably need a bit of patience to get those gorgeous images. Anytime you don't have great light, you'll want to shoot with a tripod, 
and it should be a really sturdy tripod since there's no cable release option and you'll have to directly press the shutter button. One reason patience should be part of the plan is because the best images come from raw files. And as of this review, only Sigma's Photo Pro software recognizes the raw files that this camera generates. Photo Pro is surprisingly full featured and it does a nice job of knocking down image noise, but if you need to zoom in to 100% to see how your adjustments are being handled by the raw processing software, I always do that, you have to load the full image rather than just the default preview of the file, and that took about 15 seconds per image on my Core i5 Mac with 8 gigs of RAM. As a Photoshop and Lightroom user, I was really surprised at how slow the Sigma RAW software process was. Slow also describes the clearing of the buffer so you can inspect images that you just shot. Right after you shoot, there's a brief glimpse of the image you just shot, but if you want to press the playback button and really look at an image, or maybe zoom in to inspect it, you have to wait for the buffer to clear. I had the DP3 set to capture a high-res JPEG and a RAW image simultaneously. That took around 15 seconds to clear the buffer using a Class 10 SD card. Shooting in burst mode is a reasonably quick capture at 4 frames per second for up to 7 frames. But when I did that, it took around 45 seconds to clear the buffer so that I could review images. There is also a continuous shooting mode that captures one or two frames per second, but the files are downsampled to under two megapixels. There may be some limitations we don't normally see in modern digital cameras, but the images it captures can be really impressive. In the end, a knowledgeable photographer could use the Sigma DP3 Merrill to capture gallery quality images with a little practice. So if you're a pixel peeper and you're looking for an impressive APS-C sensor paired with a great 50mm lens, have a look at the Sigma DP3 Merrill. For Kelby Training and B&H, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.